what is gene interaction if i'm if i'm like uh, if i'm saying what can be gene interaction any idea chalo i'll just tell okay gene interaction what it is happening actually i would say that it will be actually the influence we can say that it will be the influence of one allele it will be the influence of that of one allele over another it will be the simply the influence of that of one allele over another okay of the same or the other gene itself of that of the same or the other gene itself influence of one allele over another of the same we can say that uh, like one allele over uh, another itself of the same or that of other gene or that of Achha. other gene itself this thing we are representing it as that of the gene interaction itself okay Achha. so yes. now if if i'm saying about that of this gene interaction generally gene interaction it is of two types generally in gene interaction it comes of that of two types itself okay so how yeah. we can say it as gene interaction it can be defined as two types that first type which is remaining present that first type we are representing it as that of the inter allelic genic combination okay inter allelic combination itself or this inter allelic combination we can represent it as that of the intragenic combination also inter allelic or intragenic combination also we can say and the second one which is remaining present that second one we are representing it as that of the non allelic genic or non allelic interaction itself and this non allelic interaction this can be referred as that of the intergenic interaction this non allelic interaction it can be referred as that of the intergenic interaction itself okay so now what is happening in this inter intragenic or inter allelic interaction itself we can see that in this case typically what will happen we can say that uh, like this will be showing about that of influence of one allele influence of one allele over another this is showing that of the influence of one allele over that of another itself that thing we are representing it as out of the inter allelic or intragenic influence itself okay and if i am saying about that of this non allelic like intergenic interaction in terms of that of intergenic interaction itself what is happening we can say that like allele of one gene we can say that allele of one gene this is generally we can say that it is influencing the expression of that of another so you have to remember that when i am talking about that of intragenic part in terms of intragenic part this is focusing over that of the allele respect itself whereas we can say that when i am saying about that of this intergenic or non allelic part itself so in terms of this intragenic or uh, intergenic or non allelic part this is actually focusing the relation over that of one gene and that of the another gene itself it is is focusing hmm. the relation between one gene with respect to that of another gene itself okay hmm. so hmm. if I, if i am taking the case of that of this inter allelic or intragenic part itself if i'm taking the case of this inter allelic or intragenic part so inter allelic this thing we can take uh, the example as we can take the example there can be many examples one example will be the codominance the first example this will be the codominance they can be multiple allelism 
there can be multiple allelism there can be incomplete dominant dominance and all these things they can all be the we can say that uh, we can say that the uh, like examples of that of this interallelic one okay and if i'm taking the example of non allelic or intergenic one in terms of non allelic or intergenic one there can be examples like epistasis there can be examples like epistasis there can be examples like complementary genes there can be examples like we can say epistasis as well as the complementary genes also okay like that mm. the examples it can be there okay so mm. so now if i'm saying about that of this thing first of all we'll start with that of this interallelic or intragenic interaction first of all we will be starting with that of this interallelic or we can say that this intragenic interaction itself so if i'm starting with that of this interallelic or intragenic interaction itself in this case first of all we have, as we had already discussed that this is actually the influence of one allele that means this is the relation between that of like uh, two homologous chromosomes itself in that case okay and mm -hmm. this is actually the interaction in between that of two alleles okay in which one allele mm -hmm. is having the influence over that of another okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. now if i'm taking the case of this interallelic or intragenic one this interallelic it always we have to remember one thing it always like uh, shows its uh, like expression or i would say that in a better sense i would say that it always brings changes this always brings changes in the monohybrid cross result this always brings the changes in that of monohybrid cross results itself okay so interallelic or intragenic one this always brings the changes in that of monohybrid cross one whereas if i'm taking the example of non allelic or intergenic one this always brings the changes in that of the dihybrid cross results itself here this is always bringing the change in that of the monohybrid cross results itself this thing you have to remember okay so mm -hmm. now if i'm taking the like examples of that of the, all these interallelic one or intragenic one okay so in this interallelic and intragenic one this the first example that we can take that first example we are representing it as that of the incomplete dominance the first example which we can take we can represent it as that of the incomplete dominance itself okay so hmm. if i'm saying about that of this uh, like incomplete dominance you have to remember one more thing that this incomplete dominance actually we are representing it also as that of an intermediate inheritance this incomplete dominance we are actually also we are referring it as that of an intermediate inheritance itself we are referring it as that of the intermediate inheritance itself in that case okay and under which what is happening actually under which both the characteristics or you can say that both the expressions both the features and all these things they are getting blended apart that that is happening over here okay they are getting blended apart and they are mm. like uh, producing certain kind of intermediate expressions okay so here oh we can see that what is happening we can see that in this case uh, like both the alleles both the alleles they are uh, remaining present together itself both the alleles these are actually present together okay here in this case what is happening both the alleles they are remaining present together itself and when both the alleles are remaining present together at that time what will happen at that time like uh, they are producing certain when they are remaining present together at that time they are actually producing we can say that certain intermediate result 
they are resulting to produce certain intermediate expressions itself they are resulting to the production of that of certain intermediate expressions okay so here in this case mm -hmm. what is happening i'm just repeating it once more the incomplete dominance what is happening incomplete dominance like it is also known as the intermediate inheritance and in this case both the alleles they are expressing themselves together itself okay they are actually i would say that better than that of expressing together uh, because it can create the confusion between co-dominance also i can say that ki both the alleles they are remaining present together okay and these both the alleles when they are mm -hmm. remaining present together and based on their own own interaction they are giving us what they are giving us an intermediate expression itself okay they're producing an intermediate expression and that intermediate expression can result into that of what like any kind of new new kind of color new kind of trait or new kind of uh, we can say that features generation itself in that case accordingly As such. so uh, we can say that it is like this so if i'm saying about that of this incomplete dominance we have to remember one thing that this incomplete dominance, it was first of all been discovered by the person who is named as Carl Kordens. Do you remember? This incomplete dominance hmm. is first of all been discovered by that of Carl Kordens during that of 1903. Carl Kordens, he had first of all discovered this one. Actually, most of the, like, uh, most of these, all these Mendelian inheritances and all these things, they were actually been discovered by that of what? They have been discovered by that of this Carl Kordens itself. Okay. Uh, so, what is happening? If I'm taking the case of that of this incomplete dominance, in this incomplete dominance, the ratio. Okay. So we can say that the ratio which it is altering and the altered ratio it will be coming, it is always equal to that of 1 is to 2 is to 1. That means what? What will be happening? Both the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio, PR, PR stands for phenotypic ratio, do remember, and GR will be representing it as that of the genotypic ratio itself. So both the phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio in this case, in the case of that of this interallelic or intragenic interaction, it will be always equal to 1 to 1 itself in that case. Okay? Action. Okay. Huh. So, uh, we can say that if I'm taking the example, let's say that if I am taking the example, that famous NCRT example we can take, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, like we can take the example in that of like flower color in Snapdragon as well as like Mirabilis Jalapa in these things we mm -hmm. can take. Okay, mm -hmm. so that famous example that we can take it as like Mirabilis Jalapa this part we can take and here actually what is happening in terms of mirabilis jalapa what will be happening like uh, if i'm taking the p1 generation let's say the p1 generation it is capital r capital r that is red it is been crossed with that of the white individual itself this will be the red individual red flower and this will be what this will be the white flower itself so capital r capital r when it will be crossing with that of the white individual itself the uh, the f1 progeny whatever we will be getting that f1 progeny it will be what that will be capital r smaller itself in that case okay and this capital r smaller whatever we'll be getting that capital r smaller it will be always the pink Okay, now what they had done, now they had done the crossing over or that of the like selfing of that of this capital R smaller itself. So what they had done, Achoo. they had simply in order to get that of this like uh, F2 progeny, they had selfed this capital R smaller part itself. So when we are selfing this capital R smaller part, we can get this F2 part itself. So in order to get this F2 part, this capital R and here smaller is there, capital R and here smaller is there. And it is like this happening, okay? It is like this, which is happening. So uh, when the cross is getting happened, this will result to the formation of that of capital R, capital R. This will be resulting to the formation of that of capital R, small r. This will be resulting to the formation of that of small r, capital R. This will be resulting to the formation of that of smaller, smaller itself. So it will be happening like this. So in this case, we can say that simply in this case, this one is red. Okay, but unfortunately, this one will be the pink. This is not the red one. 
Okay. Again, hmm. this one we are getting as out of the pink one. And this one we can say that white. this is again the white one. And based on this part itself, what we are getting, based on this part, we are getting the ratio, the phenotypic ratio. We can say that what we are getting, we're getting one red, we're getting, we're getting two pink, the phenotypic ratio as well as one white. And in the same manner, if I'm placing them for that of the genotypic ratio also, in the same manner, if I'm placing them for that of the genotypic ratio, we'll be getting the same thing. One capital R, capital R, two capital R, smaller, and one smaller, smaller. So this is the thing about that of this intermediate inheritance itself in that case, okay? Mm -hmm. So this uh, intermediate uh, like inheritance is there. So now this intermediate inheritance, what it is happening, it is actually telling us that we can refer it also as that of a mosaic inheritance also. This intermediate Achoo. inheritance, we can also represent it as that of the mosaic inheritance also. We are also referring it as that of the mosaic inheritance. Why we are referring it as mosaic inheritance? Because in this case, what is happening? All of the like uh, kind of that of the characters which are remaining present, they have been mixed over here. They are present in a mixed state itself. So for that reason, we are representing it as a mixed or mosaic kind of inheritance itself. Okay. There can be many other examples. There can be many other examples also other examples we had taken only the examples for that of like mirabilis jalapa we can take one more example or uh, which example we can take we can take the example of that of snap dragon we can hmm. take the example of that of the snap dragon okay we can take the example of that of in animals also we can take we can take the example within that of uh, specifically, we can say that uh, uh, like the part which we are representing it as that of what? As that of Andalusian fowls. We are representing it as that of the Andalusian fowls itself. Okay. This also can be the example of that of in uh, like incomplete dominance itself. Okay.